We had families. Let's see. Let's see. We had the many faces of Hannah. And we had a plethora of red flags, everybody. Like, just be completely yourself, right? Be real. This is your Bachelorette recap. Grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hi, everybody. It's me, Lauren Zima. Is this our red rose blanket or a big old red flag? <laughs> oh, it's hometown. What an episode, you guys. It's hometowns, and today I actually don't have rosé. I have chardonnay. Why? Because I drink chardonnay with my mother, and this episode made me think of my mother, and this episode made me think of my family because they were all thinking of their families, and you guys, I cried multiple times! My grandparents, you know, but I could have loved you too. And... I was emotional, everybody. I mean, I don't usually cry watching this show. But I cried a lot watching this show. And I know I said last week that it was the first time I'd ever cried watching Hannah break up with Mike. And some of you pointed out that actually I had cried once before when Rachel and Peter broke up. And that's a good point. I did cry then and now I cried a lot. What's wrong with me? I don't like this. Ah! <laughs> Emotions. Okay, moving on. What did you guys think overall? Good episode of Hometowns? I liked it. I liked it through my tears. Okay. So first we have Peter Weber of Westlake Village, California. And Hannah says that this is down the street from the mansion. Down the street from the mansion. Uh, interestingly though, we don't start anywhere near the mansion. We're in a field of daisies. I don't know why they started this here. Peter's like, you're in my hometown right now. And Hannah's like, I, I love, love it. it. Uh, this field. So this is my baby. So Peter wants Hannah to see his baby. And it is his car, because Peter loves all modes of transportation. <laughs> That's his thing. The hometown dates were really on point about the guy's things, weren't they? Like Peter's the transportation guy, and Jed's the guitar guy, and Luke's the Christian guy, and Tyler's the man who stands up for women. Where do you want to wind up? Hmm. Tyler's also the shirtless guy. Let's be honest. So they're in Peter's car and Hannah finds a condom in Peter's car. And I love this because I love when they break the fourth wall. Peter's like, not put that on camera. Oh my God, no, don't put that on camera. Like AK on the cameras for the show. But guess what, Peter, we saw it. And you know, Peter's like, I'm a safe guy, whether I'm flying or another F word. And I don't want to shock anyone, but Pilot Pete takes Hannah flying. Drink for every mode of transportation Hannah's in in this episode. Mm -hmm. She literally goes by air, by land, and by sea. Okay, uh, don't drink every time Peter and Hannah say it's so cool to do what they're doing. Is it that cool? It's fine. Do not drink every time Peter does what has become his signature howl. It started last week after Hannah gave him the rose on the group date with Garrett and Luke. And now we're continuing it. Yes. Then we're with Peter's family, and oh my gosh, they are so cute. If you guys had to pick a favorite family from the hometown dates, who are you picking? I gotta say I loved Peter's. His mom and dad were both so sweet. They both made me cry, and him and his little brother were dressed exactly the same. It was so cute. My grandparents, you know, but I could have loved you too. And Drink for every time Peter was really emotive about his strong feelings for Hannah this episode. Mm -hmm. The way I feel with her, no one's ever made me feel. He's saying he's never felt this way before. But I have not felt like this. It's truly happened. He's never felt this strongly before. I've never felt this. He's never brought a girl home when we felt this strongly before. Like, I've never brought someone home that I've felt so strongly for. Mm -hmm. Vamos a comer. Now, in the past, we learned Peter speaks Spanish. And now we're sort of learning why, though I still wish they'd explained it more. I, I think the implication here is that Peter's Cuban. They talk about Cuban food. But then they do a German prayer, which I guess is Weber, and they howl. This is a vocal family. And I love it. It's fun. Great. I'm just very emotional right now. And then Peter's sweet mom is talking to Hannah and I'm crying. And then Peter says he thinks he's not my person right now. And I'm crying, why? And then Peter's dad is crying and I'm sobbing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Were you guys crying? Was this just me? His dad just looks so like a dad, like he had such a dad haircut and I was just crying. Are and you like, in love with her? I, <laughs> I am definitely there. I don't know, like I'm falling for her like crazy right now. 
And Peter says he's in love with Hannah. So here we go. It's getting real, everyone. Drink every time somebody says love. I love it. You think she's in love with you? You said I love you to her yet? See you guys. Love you. God bless you all. all. Right. Love you guys. Love Definitely you. in love with Hannah. I'll be able to say I love you. You know, I do love you. I started actually falling in love with her. Who do you think has the realest, truest, deepest feelings for Hannah right now? We are currently in Jupiter, Florida, about to have my hometown with Hannah Brown. Grab your swimsuits, grab your sunscreen. Forget your shirt, it's time for Tyler C. Proud to be scandal free, it's Tyler C. <sighs> Jed's not the only one who can make up songs this episode. <laughs> Sounds good out of here. Let's do it. So we are in Jupiter, Florida with Tyler. This might be my favorite hometown date ever. <sighs> I'm gonna tell you why. A lot of important points ahead. I will make my case. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Well, you're out shining it right now, but it's beautiful. So Tyler always has a beautiful compliment for Hannah, right? He'll say something like, we're here in my hometown, which is beautiful, but you're out shining it. He's always giving Hannah a one-up compliment, which, you know what? I like. It's a signature move, and I'm in for it. Oh, was that a windmill? No, just a lighthouse. <laughs> we gotta keep our eyes open. We gotta keep our eyes peeled. It's just a lighthouse. Uh, point two, Tyler's hair looks great. Number three, we're going on a boat! The best way to explore Jupiter is by boat. I love a boat. Grab your swimsuits, grab your sunscreen. We're getting on a boat with Tyler C. You don't need a Tyler T. You just need a Tyler C. Sit down, Jack. Don't drink every time this date, Hannah made some kind of allusion to Tyler's past. There have been concerns for me that Tyler's ready for like next steps in a relationship. I will say that I wish we'd just address this. Throughout the date with Tyler, there are these implications. I think that he might have been a player. Seeing him now, seeing him completely changed, I could legitimately see my brother getting engaged. If so, honestly, no judgment. You're in your early 20s, whatever, as long as you treat people well on an individual basis. You don't have to be locked into a serious relationship. But did you guys feel like they were trying to say Tyler had been a player without saying it? Let me know in the comments below. I think he's super hot. <laughs> and we are soaking in the sun, and we are swimming in the water. And uh, enjoying this beautiful weather with a beautiful girl. Oh, cheers. And we are having margaritas. This is the best hometown ever. Oh, we love Jupiter, Florida, because after all it's already given us, we then take a turn and there's live music. And red alert, everybody, red alert. Shirtless, dancing, Tyler C. catches Hannah as she jumps into his arms. <gasps> I know we're gonna pray with Luke later, but I need a prayer right now. Send me up from Jesus. Give me some love from the Lord. I needed to get through this fabulous moment. I thought that it was enough when he lifted her onto the horse, but then he shirtless catches her midair. Wow. So you said you haven't seen your dad? No, I haven't seen him since since I left. Yeah. I had kind of forgotten that Tyler's dad was really sick right before he left. So we're going to see Tyler reunite with his father, who had been very ill. And I am bracing myself for more tears. Hi. Hi. What's up, buddy? Tyler and his dad are hugging, and I am crying. Thank you, buddy. You look great, too, man. And he's like, hi, Pops. And he says back, I love you, buddy. Dude, buddy, love you, man. I need more wine for all these tears. I really do. That's not a good thing to say out loud. Tyler's not one to let many people get close to. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Tyler's dad talked to Hannah about how Tyler has a hard time getting close to people. I wanted to know the why there. Give us more on that. What is Tyler's trauma? That's a horrible ask, but I do want to know. <laughs> Sorry. And as if Tyler C. hadn't given us enough, he then changes the very structure of the show. Hannah is going to get in the car to leave, and most people say, I don't want you to go. But Tyler says, I'm gonna go with you. I think I have to leave you here, mm -hmm. but I'm not. Okay. I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. And he's getting in that car, because he's gonna be by her side, or at the very least, kind of beautifully on top of her in a cute makeout sort of a way. 
And it was wonderful. And Tyler's honest about his feelings. He says, One day, I'll be able to say I love you, you know? And I do believe that I'll be able to stand 100% behind it. He says he wants to say he loves Hannah. He feels he's on that path, but he doesn't want to say it just yet. Okay, being real, I get it. Then we have Luke P. in Gainesville G for Georgia. It's hard to get excited about the start of this Luke P. date, isn't it? Like when you guys were about to watch the Luke P. date, were you excited to see Hannah meet his family and stuff? Uh, on the bright side, Hannah is in another cute, colorful leather jacket. And this date's about the bright sides, isn't it? Because we've had so many dark times with Luke P. And we got some bright sides here. We did. Which still isn't saying much. I want you to get to know me better. Okay. So I figured we'd do something that I do on a weekly basis. So Drink Every Time, one of the guys is on brand this episode. Luke's activity with Hannah is to go to Sunday school. Yeah, every Sunday before church, we have a Sunday school. And <laughs> you're going to be a part of it. Is it even Sunday? That's a question I had. No way to know. I was chasing sex. And drink every time we hear Luke say something he's said before this date because he gets up to tell his story again and talks about chasing sex. And I was entangled and caught up in sin. And tells that shower story. I remember getting in the shower. I mean, drink every time Luke says, I remember. I remember getting in the shower. I remember feeling like I had all this weight on me. And I remember, and I remember, and I remember seeing like a hole open up. But Luke, we're done remembering. In fact, we'd like to forget. We don't want to remember, we want to reinvent. We don't want to remember, we want to reconfigure. Luke, let go. We don't want to remember, we want to reevaluate. Don't we? Because you know what's another R-E word, red, red flags. That's all we've gotten with Luke all season long. But Hannah said she's seen the good in Luke through all the drama. So we are powering through. Anything that you look at to be negative in your life, I want you to know that like God is going to use that for a positive. But on the bright side, Luke says one good thing. He advises that every negative you have in your life, God is going to use that for a positive. And I, I agree with that. I do. See the positive. Where is it? I'm trying to see it. Where's that? I can't find it. I want to see it. But I don't know where it is. Okay, so... He's just the nicest dude. He's the real deal. It's just evident in how he lives, how he talks. But another bright side, um, Luke is surrounded by what I'm calling Luke's army. They are his family and friends, and they are telling Hannah, he's such a great guy. He makes friends with everyone. Luke's literally made friends with everybody around him. <laughs> they are praying over him, they are supporting him, they are endorsing him. I feel like surrounding Luke with people who love him really brings him back to like who he is. And my question was why? Because this is not the Luke we've seen. Why do you guys think that the Luke on The Bachelorette is so different from the Luke these people know? My guess is that Luke is someone who can thrive in his environment, in his world, with the rules that he plays by. But when Luke is in an environment unfamiliar to him, with people of different backgrounds and ideas and choices, he doesn't do well because he disagrees. And when he disagrees, he shames. Let me know in the comments below way down deep below in the darkness. And I want to applaud Hannah for being honest with Luke's family. She said, we've had some issues. I mean, it was just like constant me trying to get him to talk about everything. And we've had some disagreements. I've called him out. To so hear the stories and stuff that happened, I mean, that's not like my son. Luke's brother says that Luke is a man who will be humble. And then once he realizes it and he sees like, okay, that wasn't cool, like you will see the most humble guy. And I want to drink for every time Hannah's face says something this episode, because Hannah's face is like, humble, is he? And Luke's dad says that it's clear that Hannah wants to be the one for Luke. Not only could she be the one, she wants to be the one. And she's like, mm. Yeah, I know that we've, we've struggled. I have put you through a struggle. Luke says some good stuff to Hannah. He tells her that he's put her through a struggle and that he's sorry. I am sorry. And this is one of the only times we've heard Luke truly flat out own his behavior on the show, so okay. I'm not gonna drink for it. I'll just, I can't even raise my glass for it. I'll just look at my wine for it and think about what I want the future to be. I want 
want to be better. And there's still a lot that I have to show Hannah. Luke says that Hannah is his future wife. That I'm looking at my future wife. And Luke says that he loves her. I can tell you that I do love you. And they have a really beautiful makeout session. And again, my emotional self is back. I don't know why, but I was getting, I, okay, I wasn't crying, I wasn't crying, but I was getting like some goosebumps during it. I mean, they do have chemistry, the chemistry is there, and I think it's kept Hannah holding on, hasn't it? To all those red flags. Hannah even says, we had a good day. We had a good day, all day. All day. That's like a big deal. <laughs> That's a bum deal. You know, you don't want to be celebrating. He had one good day. It's not a good place to go. And then, oh, this is ominous. She says, and I quote, but don't screw up. Don't screw up. I'll freaking hurt you. Or I'll freaking hurt you. But we know it's coming, don't we? She said sex and Jesus still loves her. I in a windmill. In a windmill twice. Yeah, I have feeling like I've fallen in love with him. I'm falling in love with him. Now, what is interesting, you guys, is Luke tells Hannah that he loves her, but Hannah hasn't even told Luke she's falling in love with him. As of even the end of this episode, she has only said that to Jed. Interesting. Do you think it matters that Hannah has only said she's falling in love to Jed? I do. And that might make us cry later, so grab your tissues. Why did that one stick? Is there something on it? Gross. Okay, then we have Jed Wyatt in Knoxville, Tennessee. And what are we gonna see? Him playing the guitar. You know it's coming. It's coming. He always has something in his pocket for me. Hannah says Jed always has something in his pocket for her. <laughs> like what? A guitar pick? And yep, there we are. We're at the recording studio. Didn't take long. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna try to tell our story and then we'll make a melody. And we're writing a song. And wow, Hannah says that she thanks the Lord for Jed. Thank you, Lord, so much. It's a great day here in Tennessee. Hannah's faith, she told me, is very important to her. And for her to say that she thanks the Lord for Jed, that seems significant to me. What do you guys think? Is Jed still the front runner? I felt he was the front runner after last week's episode and I still think he is now. And again, let's drink for a significant face from Hannah. They're recording the song, and Hannah's face when she kissed Jed with those headphones on, I thought it was telling. Mm -hmm. She just looks at him like she loves him, you know? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> then we go to Jed's family, and Jed says he's gonna rip a cheers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip a cheers. What does that mean? So many new phrases on this season of The Bachelorette. I'm gonna fall in love for you and rip a cheers. Don't you say you're gonna rip a fart? <laughs> Has, have you heard rip a cheers before? I don't know what it means, but we did it. And a cheers to the person that I am starting to love. Oh, and then Jed invents another new phrase. He says he is starting to love. I am starting to love. I mean, we always say I'm falling for you, but now we're starting to love. And by the way, just 30 seconds ago, you told her you were in love with her. So are you starting to be? Or are you? Are you in? Are you out? I am starting to love. Where you at, Jed? I got a lot of questions. When you stick to your truth, it's beneficial to everybody. Just as we've been doing with Jed the past few episodes, we are looking at Jed's family through the lens of what we have heard about him and his alleged ex-girlfriend with whom he went on the show allegedly still dating, and he allegedly told her he was going to continue dating her once he was off the show. And I interviewed this woman, Haley, and what she told me is that Jed's mom kind of knew that he was going on the show just for his career, and, and so I'm just looking at this all through this lens. It's a little surprising. You know, because I still don't have my head around all of this. Jed's dad says that things are a little surprising and that he still doesn't have his head around all of it. Isn't this crazy? It is. And what is it? Is the it that he didn't expect his son, who he thought was going on the show for his career, to come back saying he was in love with this woman, especially when he thought that his son had a different girlfriend who he was allegedly in love with? Question mark? I don't know. So, you know, with Jed, our red flag has been raised. And it's getting higher each week, isn't it? 
It's all the way up at full mast. It's really waving in the wind. Do you feel like Jed would be at a point in his life where he would be ready for that? I wouldn't have felt that way before. Mm -hmm. Taking the relationships out of it, Jed's mom says that music is Jed's heart and soul. Try to create time and space to do his music. Yeah. It's his heart and it's his soul. Mm -hmm. so. I'm very protective over Jed. Then, oh my God, Jed's sister is savage. She says she's not sure if it's a good idea for Jed to fall for Anna. And honestly, like him potentially falling in love with you, I'm like, I'm not sure that it's a good thing. She is so... Hey girl, speak your mind. I appreciate it and it's what Hannah's all about. Jed's mom is saying that this doesn't feel realistic. Just, it, just, so. it doesn't all feel very realistic to me, but you know, you're the one living it. And Jed's trying to say it's real. This is like real emotions. She's looking sort of surprised and I'm really reading into this as to whether she's possibly talking about his feelings being real because Jed's ex said that she sent Jed off to go on the show, not thinking it was a real show. So does Jed's mom think that Jed's feelings are real. I think this is crazy. Oh. Like she asked me upstairs if I thought prior to this, would she be ready to be engaged? And I said, no. Rip it cheers everybody to this mess. Mm -hmm. Night did not go like I expected it would go. I did not get the validation that I thought I would get. The whole vibe of Jed's visit was a downer, and Hannah said that, and then at the end, Jed was like, it couldn't have gone better. Such a beautiful day, everything just worked out. It's like, it fucking could have, Jed. 100%. And it's time for the rose ceremony. What am I doing? It feels like a very impossible situation with like, having feelings for multiple men. Um, Hannah doesn't know what she's going to do, and I don't either. Did you guys have any idea how this rose ceremony would end? I felt as though we have gotten red flags from Luke all season, right? I mean, Luke is like a bag of red flags. He's like a banner of red flags. He's like running the factory where the red flags are made. And then we've got Jed. And Jed, on camera, has been swimming right along all season long. If we hadn't heard what we'd heard about Jed up until this point, we would have thought he was quite sweet. And this was the first red flag that we've had from Jed. I mean, per her relationship with Luke, we know that Hannah's okay with ignoring a red flag or two, you know? So I didn't know what was gonna happen. I'm not thinking she's gonna send Jed home. He's the only person she said she's falling in love with. And she still seems to have such a strong connection to Luke. And Tyler's not done a thing wrong, nor has Peter. So what do we do? Ah! <sighs> okay. Let me move those, that's disgusting. Just like some of this behavior. Peter. So Peter gets the first rose. I don't know if I saw that coming. I don't know what to think anymore. And then Tyler gets a rose. Well, I'm happy about that. And now it's Jed versus Luke. It's a bag of red flags versus one big red flag and the flags are waving in the wind. Are you okay? Um, no. Anna's talking to Chris and says she has four great men. Um, and she needs more time. Yes, because Luke took up a lot of it. I can't make a decision. I don't know what to do. And we cut back to the guys and they say it'll be baloney if Jed doesn't get a rose. It'll be complete baloney if you don't get a rose. I can't believe we're talking about baloney again. Mm. How do you compare uh, apples to oranges to kiwi to <laughs> cantaloupe? Like you can't. Hannah tells Chris that she can't compare the fruit. You know, one guy's a grapefruit, one guy's a star fruit, one guy's a kumquat, and one guy's a jicama. And sometimes there's a delicious snack, but it's unhealthy. And sometimes there's a nutritious snack, but it's boring. And sometimes you have a perfect snack, the banana. It takes a little bit of work, you gotta peel back the layers, but inside it's amazing. You know what? Maybe we wanna have it twice. I hate myself for doing that. <laughs> snacks on snacks on snacks. And then Chris Harrison comes in and gives Hannah the roses she asked for. You know, you might need one rose and then you might need another rose a second time. Wait. So Luke gets a rose and Jed gets a rose and everybody's going to the fantasy suites. Hannah, get yours, girl. I applaud you. 
Now Hannah's changing the structure of the show in a brilliant way. Bring all four of them. Why wouldn't you? What do you guys think? Were you surprised that Hannah kept all four guys? Let me know in the comments below. I got a rose, but to be honest, it doesn't feel like I got a rose at all. But then I was sort of surprised. Jet is all mad about the rose situation. He doesn't like that he and Luke both got roses. He says, what the F is going on? What the f is going on? And Jed, we have the same question. He's been a constant toxin through every bit of this. What I will say is that Jed is talking about Luke being a toxin on this journey, on this experience, on camera, and that's true. Where Jed has been a toxin is off camera, in the shadows. Through every bit of this, Luke has been a toxin. Jed, on the other hand, through every bit of this has been a guitar player. Okay. Next week on The Bachelorette. And then we get the trailer. And you know what? I'm glad that Hannah kept Luke because it's giving us this conversation. My husband would never say what you said to me. This, I've had sex and Jesus still loves me moment. Jesus still loves me. That we've been waiting all season for. This altercation which we know leads to the windmill reveal. I love the windmill. Is this, do I look like a windmill? It's hard to overstate a windmill. Easier to do a flag. It's fantasy sweet week. And we hear Hannah singing about the fantasy sweets, and I love that because I can relate the fantasy sweets. Ultimately, you guys, a really good episode. Obviously, I cried a ton. <laughs> and here's a big question. Who do you think the windmill moment happens with? Is it Peter, with whom her chemistry is a 10 out of 10? Is it Jed, with whom she is falling in love? Is it Tyler, who looks amazing shirtless? Is it Luke? It's not Luke, there's no way it's Luke. We know it's not Luke, so the other three options are available. A, B, or Tyler C. Let me know in the comments below. I love you guys so much. Thank you, Beyond, for watching Roses and Rosé. I am on Cameo if you would like a message from me. I adore you because none of you give me red flags. Let's finish our wine because Hannah needs it. Wow, JC and I didn't know this, but we're, we kind of matched today. Yep. It's like when all the guys wore tees, we're all wearing blouses, mm -hmm. color charts. Mm -hmm. And you know what I would like for you to find? Mm. The right match. JC is single and available. Bye! Oh my God, I'm actually starting to cry again right now. I'm not joking. Fight it back, fight it back, fight it back. Back in my eyes, salt water.